Hi, I'm Jody and welcome back to my channel. I'm a programmer, hacker, uh, system admin, and I show you what I do. Today I was playing the Hero CTF. Hero CTF is one of the nicest CTFs you can play. Lots of different challenges. They are fun, well thought, and well planned. Version 5 means this is the fifth year that they are uh, having this challenge. And you, if you have not played, CTFs are Capture the Flag, a game that hackers, programmers, reverse engineers around the world play. They gather, they solve different challenges, they find flags and submit them and get the points. We have a good team at the moment. Unfortunately, it's standing at 8th place. We were better, but we have not played since last night. Ah. Uh... On the CTFs, there are different challenges in different categories. For example, cryptography. You have to break a cryptographic message to get the uh, flag. Or forensics. Or programming challenges, reverse engineering challenges, system challenges, and web challenges. Also, pawn and different sections. Blockchain is kind of new. Just like a blockchain hype in recent years, this is added to the uh, CTF. And the reason I'm showing you, I have also solved these two, but have not submitted yet. We want to surprise other teams. <laughs> but the point is that on the blockchain challenges, the people who are running the CTF run their own instances of a blockchain, in many cases Ethereum, because you can write programs with solidity on them, you can create contracts, contracts might have issues, so you can crack the contracts and these kind of stuff. And you have to interact and solve them. As you can see here on the, for example, challenges, it says just go to this address and all challenges are hosted there. This is it uh, here. You can create a new MetaMask wallet for yourself with this data, get some funds from the faucet and start checking the contracts, different things based on what you know. But this is a starter point. I want to show you that you can start playing blockchain challenges to it. Not easy, but if you know your way, you can find your way. So. In this case, I'm going to show you the arrest. This says in the dim lit confines of his room, a lone figure hunched over a computer. A, pr a person is hacking and creating malwares. It's very important to read this very word by word because sometimes this contains important information, especially on the OS int, open source open source intelligence, things everyone can find. But at the end it says, okay, he is arrested and we want to see who sent him money. He was installing a ransomware, his, this is his address, and we want to find the syndicate behind him. So the question is easy. We have a blockchain running in blah blah address, and we want to see who transferred money to this wallet. Looks very easy. But the point is, you don't have a blockchain search engine for this specific blockchain that these people are running. So you need to do programming. This is why I chose this challenge to show you. Because from the basics, you can start your own programming. For this kind of stuff, one of the good things we have is Web3 PY library. This library can connect to a blockchain, Ethereum-based blockchain mainly, and uh, get information, send information, interact with the blockchain, and this kind of stuff. So the question is now totally clear. We have an address with a blockchain in it, running in, on it, we found it here. It says our blockchain runs on these addresses. 
it's a POA blockchain. I'll talk about it later. You can create a MetaMask for it. You can get a money from its faucet, get five coins, their specific coins. And it also, because it's educational, it says, okay, you can use Web3 Python module or you can use the JS equivalent. You need to know Solidity and other stuff. And also these are our contracts. So let's start. I've already solved this and this is the program to do so. But I will go step by step to show you what we are doing. This is a Linux machine. I have done pip3 install web3. So this is installed. I use IPython because it's very easy to use and easy to navigate. So we import whatever we need. We sh could have do this asynchronously, but I have not go that way. And we have this. Then I say, okay, create a web tree for me from this HTTP provider. This is the address provided by the CTF people. So now I'm connected to this. If I start working with this one, I will get errors because this is a POA blockchain, proof of authority. And the Bitcoin world, we have POW, proof of work. You have to solve something very difficult, use lots of CPU power to solve this and mine a new block. There is also a POS, proof of stake. You have this much coin, so you can mine the next one. Proof of authority is something in the middle. So normally Web3 library doesn't work with it. You need a compatibility middleware to use POA. We say get this from GETH. GETH is a project to work with Ethereum written in Go language. So it's a Go implementation of the Ethereum. Say, okay, use that middleware, use the POA middleware from there. This is known for me by this mentioning that it runs a POA. Even if you don't know this and you start querying this one, you will get errors that you need a middleware for POA, most probably. So I will add my layer here. Now I'm connected to this. I can start querying something. For example, I can say, W3, W3 was this connection with a small letter. So this is my W3. I can say on the ETH layer, get block latest. Read the latest block. It says, okay, I did it. Let me do it again. It reads the latest block. In the beginning, when I started the challenge, it was very cool because it says it has a visualized chain link but it only shows the last block. Otherwise, we were able to just search and find who sent money to that address. This is the latest block. Difficulty is two. Proof of authority data is this one. No gas used, gas limit. And parent hash size, size of this block. And number, the sequence number of this specific block and some more data like transactions. There is no transaction. Nobody sent money to anyone on the last block. What I did was, you can also request for the zero, the beginning of the block. block. This blockchain started with this. What I did was I saw this size in the beginning, created a loop to go through I don't know, 0 to 100. Check the size. If size is larger than 700, breakpoint. Show me the, uh, this specific block so I can investigate what is going on. I wanted to see how these transactions work. I ran that and found a block with a transaction. It. I can go with a random one and see if we have something there. Sometimes it was slow. At the end, I ran my program overnight. When it worked, I just submitted the answer. 
Okay, still no transactions. I know that 950 do have transactions. For example, this one, just to make it more clear. It says, okay, this is the sequence number. No, this is the gas used. This is the sequence number. I've requested for this. And on transactions, we have lots of transactions. I can check these one by one. So now I can read blocks in a for loop. I can read all blocks or for example, say I zero up to 10,000. When I was checking this, we only had three 30,000 blocks, although it has a timestamp. So we could check for the timestamps too. And I will print them to see how we are going uh, forward and how long it will take. Is it feasible or not? But now we are reading blocks. Some of the blocks do have transactions in them. So this block has some transactions. I can check this tr specific transaction and see the from and to, and if I want the value or other data. As soon as I find one transaction where two is equal to my hacker's wallet, it's enough to print the from and submit the for. Remember, this was the challenge. It said, we've arrested a hacker and we want to see who funded his wallet. Very straightforward from now on. Sorry. Let's check for this specific transaction. As you can see on the transaction section, it doesn't say the data of this transaction. It doesn't provide the data. What says, okay, there is a transaction with this uh, identifier. So I can say W3 ETH get transaction, this transaction. And it gets the data of this specific transaction. It says, okay, this is mined in block number 950, I know. From this to this address, and this is the amount of the coins uh, moved. So now it's very easy. I will show you my program. This is my program. Same imports, also I import date time, connection, and I say, okay, check from zero to 10,000. Now I want to run it and I know that the answer is in nine to seven. So I'm running it from here. Uh, check all the blocks from the beginning up to infinity or 10,000. Read a block, read block I, in that block, check all the transactions and read that specific transaction. Get transaction based on the transaction ID. If two equals to my hacker's wallet, print found her from. This is the person who sent the money. Okay, this is enough, but I want to see the progress and how it works. So on every transaction, I will print from to and value just to see how I'm progressing. To have a better understanding on each block, I will printing, okay, block number, blah, blah. This is the size and date time, date time from timestamp, block timestamp. So I know the time of this block. The question indicates that all the transactions which are important are happening before the start. The relevant, no, these are them. Anyway, somewhere it says, yes, all the OS in transactions took place before the CTF began. So I just need to check for a relative one day of data. I would run it. Okay, excuse me, I had to answer the door. Inconsistent use of tabs and spaces. I was doing an edit here and it should be the, yes, that's it. Uh, and why my exit doesn't have a piece. 
Okay, as you can see, first it should connect to this one. Sometimes it's very slow because I believe some, some other people are even attacking the infrastructure of CTFs. I don't know why they do this. And sometimes there are too many consistent. contestants. And here, one by one, we are reading blocks. I know the answer now that in 9 to 7. I've ran it overnight from 0 to 10,000. I'm just showing it to you now. Each time I read a block here, for each transaction in that specific block, I'm reading that transaction and checking if the receiver is the address of this specific hacker, I would print the from with a found hair because we believe it's a hair. Otherwise, just to keep the track, I will print all the transactions with the values to know how much money is being transferred. And on each block, I'd say, okay, this specific block with this block size and convert the timestamp to the time. So I would know the time. This is how I'm going through that. As I told you, I ran this overnight and got the results back in the morning. Now, oh, now we have it. So this is the person who uh, founded this ransomware early in the morning. Hope you enjoyed it. For yourself, it's good to install Web3PY and go through documentation, connect to a network, see how it works, and participate in CTFs to learn new things. Have fun.